We'll call a regular meeting in the New Orleans City Council for March 15, 2016, 5 p.m. to order. First items on the agenda, <coughs> the consent agenda items. What's your wishes? Call for a motion to approve those. Second. We got a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2A, conduct a public hearing considering a resolution on the proposed 2016 Utility Street and Alley Improvements Group 1 project. Steve? Thank you, Mr. President. Th uh, this uh, particular <coughs> capital improvement plot project was included in the uh, December 15th City Council meeting uh, engineering report reviewed and um, approved at that time. So we went, went through the process of uh, assembling preliminary plans and scheduling a public hearing. As you can see, we've got about 12 locations. The estimated project cost for this is about $3.3 million at this Ooh. time. So you could open it up for public comments. I have not received any written comments with regard to this project. Okay, thank you. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing and we'll take them one by one. If there's anybody out wants to say anything please step up to the mic name and address for the record first one is front street 8 north street to 12 north street Num uh, second one is valley street from 16 south street to 20th south street third one is minnesota street from 13 south to 16 south Fourth one is Fender Drive, Warja Avenue. Boy, some of these are tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who named them? Who's on that naming committee? I don't know. <laughs> Avenue. Yeah. Reinhorn. Anybody on those streets want to be heard? <laughs> <laughs> I did get a um, I did get a call uh, just before I came uh, from a resident uh, whose family uh, has living in that area and just uh, expressing uh, strong support. Uh, for uh, the completion of the streets uh, and alleys in that uh, in that section, and I assume all the alleys are going to be paved at the same time. Uh, yes, Mr. President, the and councilors, uh, the roadways and alleys within the plat itself are mm -hmm. included in this project as part of the development agreement. So we'll have finished roadways, sidewalks, street lighting, things of that nature, alleys. Thank you. Anybody like to be heard on those? Seeing none, we'll go to number five. Alley Block 67 South of Center Street. Alley Block 69 South of Center Street. Uh, 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 please step up to the... Yeah, could you go up to the mic, name and address, just for the record? Where's the mic? Right, right there. Right there. Yeah, my name is Charlie Pladson. We live at 308 South Minnesota Street. And uh, our alley will be in the num alley block 69. <coughs> I was just wondering if you have the costs. We live in a condominium. My party, Barb Wilford, is here representing the LMR condos. So we were just wondering if uh, when, what kind of billing you plan on doing and, and when that would be feasible to for us to know about it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kaler? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch your last name. Pladsen. Pladsen. P-L-A-D-S-E-N. Okay. Um, yes, we certainly do. We have a cost estimate for these particular alleys. They they run about uh, $44 per linear foot. I believe your your parcel is 50, fit, 50 site, feet, yeah. so that's 2200 You've got four units, so the div dividing that comes up to like Five hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. At the end of the project, you'll get another notice in the mail with the exact amount that we're recommending. There'll be another public hearing, but that's that's my estimate at this time, and that's typically payable over ten years, or you can pay it up front. It's up. It's up to you. Yeah, w but we'll get the billing in the mail and yes. everything like you'll that. You'll get a notice with the amount. There'll be another public hearing, and then you'll get another final billing yeah. that you can pay within 30 days or can be over 10 years. It's up when does that bill normally come? Well, if we're gonna construct it this year, we typically don't even get finished with the project until next year with seal oh. coating and everything. So 
it wouldn't be until even next year. So oh, it'd be next year, yeah. next summer sometime. So then that gets on the taxes the following year if you don't plan to pay yeah. it up front. How much is was it per linear you've, foot? You've got a kind of a unique situation. It's forty-four dollars per linear okay. foot per side. It's twenty-two hundred divided by four is about five hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. If my math is okay today. So. Okay. <laughs> now, now, does the paving go all the way up to the like the garages in the back? We we pave 14 feet in width for the residential sections, and then we'll match in driveways if you have an existing thing. But we don't like to pave the, pave the entire 50 feet up to the property line. So yeah, we can work with the property owners on what you have there. You have kind of a long garage, as I recall. Yeah, we got a four stall. So and then, uh, uh, well, it's five. What what is the lines, the boundaries of the alley itself? We're about five and a half. Our concrete yep. is about five and a half feet from the the out outside part of the pole. If you can go by that, if that would be the well, the border. I, I couldn't tell you in re relative to your concrete until we have it staked. But the the alley is twenty feet in width. Okay. It's basically centered on probably <coughs> what's there. So okay. we can we can help figure that out later when we get it staked. Sure, so that's all I had. All right. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Anybody else like to be heard on that one? Just for the record, Steve, now, the billing actually comes from the county. It does not come from the city, correct? Uh, initially, uh, it comes from the city with regard to the to the assessment amount. You, you have the public hearing. If it's approved, then it goes up to the county. We'll send them another letter indicating they can pay it at the county within 30 days of the, of the public hearing if it's approved, or they can pay it. It's payable over 10 years with a simple interest that's tied <coughs> into the bond issue. So we don't know that amount yet, but it's it's been running about three and a half percent, so. Okay. Yeah, Go ahead. My name is Mike Reese. And when the, they did the surveying for the alley, I talked to the surveyors and I asked them if he knew about how, how much it would cost. And he says, well, the way I understand it, he said if the alley was charged to the homeowners when it was put in, that the homeowners wouldn't have to pay for it again. Is that true? It's not no. not correct, <laughs> and I, I I I don't believe that's been said. But uh, the reconstruction of alleys is typically specially assessed back to the adjoining property owners. I can't remember how old that alley is. That's the life of that alley has long since expired. So you pay as the benefit occurs, and that's. The policy that uh, the assessment policy that's been adopted with the city is that reconstruction of alley, the cost of that is reassessed back to the pri property owners. Okay, well that's what the uh, surveyor, mm -hmm. whoever surveyed it, told me. So okay, that's well that's why I, I asked the question. I, I think he knows better than that, but I okay. we'll have a discussion with him. So you're going to take it down, how far? We take it down, approximately. Joe, help me out. I don't have the section. 16. 15? 15 inches. So we pr come back with uh, for 3 inches of blacktop and 12 inches of gravel. We probably have about 2 inches there now or originally had 2 inches of blacktop. 3 inches of blacktop is good enough even for uh, garbage trucks when they come it, through? It, it's doable. I mean, yeah, how much do you want to pay? But I mean, how much do you want to pay? You well, know, we can keep building these sections up until it costs you five, four or five thousand dollars, and it's kind of a compromise. That's been working for us. That's what we've been doing the last ten years. So. Okay, but if you're going to do it, you might as well do it good right away. That that's the well, point that I'm getting to. I, I think we're doing it good right away. Okay, because now you know it's got the dips in there. How much is in there now? What was in there originally? <laughs> well, they'd overlaid it too yet. Oh, I, I guess I'm not familiar with that. They might have did some patching in there, yeah. That's maintenance. I, I, I guess I don't know what's there. What Originally, the original it was two was? inches. You don't know what the original was? It was two inches, six inches of gravel and two inches of blacktop. Oh, okay. So now you're going to put in three? Yes. Okay. Twice Thank the gravel and one and a half times the blacktop. How long is that going to take from start to finish? Uh, it usually doesn't take too long. They can probably get her knocked out in two or three weeks if it doesn't rain, not counting the, the establishment of the turf, reestablishment of the grass. 
So usually two, two to three weeks, they get in there and they excavate it, gravel it, and get some ready to pave. So weather always plays a role in this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. You can help super supervise for us. <laughs> I'll be out there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Anybody else like to be heard on 69? Okay, number seven is uh, block 70 south of Center Street. Okay, Ron Reinhardt, 419 South Broadway. This will probably, Mr. Kaler, uh, have you looked at our alley ever? I have, yes. You know, it's got the one end, it's quite a bit higher than the other. And the water goes down and it goes out and it backs up when it freezes. Mm -hmm. Boy, then you sit and water it. If you should look at the alley now, how it's breaking up. Are you gonna try to take away some of that? I have to look at the sections. It's been a while since I looked at the plan. Yeah. It's been that way since it was put in a long, long time ago. Yeah. One of the first alleys, I'd say. When you're talking about slope, you mean cross yep. slope? Yeah, yeah, the slope, yeah. yeah that's, that, that is a difficult alley. We've got a lot of things going on. Yeah, there. I know. <laughs> We're actually going to add some storm sewer in down on the south end. Okay, yeah, that's that the one, right? That's the really bad one. Yeah, we're, we're not going to try and remedy all the side slopes, mm -hmm. but I think we can make it a little bit better. Looking at these sections, we're matching in pretty well with the existing driveways and everything. So once we get it laid out and, and staked and everything, if you're interested, we can kind of show you where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But I think we can make it quite a bit better. Because I haven't, I, I, gosh, I don't think I've seen an alley like that in town that has such a deep slope there. Yeah, it's always a challenge because yeah. you got hills and... Well, the one there, I think they did that when they built that house years and years ago. Mm -hmm. They conformed with that, which probably wasn't the right thing to do. Yep. Okay, thank you. It? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to be heard? Number eight, block 70 south of Center Street. Number nine, alley block 72 south of Center. Yes. 71. Oh, I missed 71. Yeah. I missed 71. <coughs> Nobody on 71? Okay, 72. Take them both. 71 and 72. Uh, 72. Uh, my name is Gordon Hawk. I live at 617 South Broadway. And they're going to do our alley this year. And I was just wondering what it was going to cost for per foot. You said $44. That, that's our estimate, Mr. Hawk. Do you have a 50-foot wide? Yep. So we're guessing $2,200 uh, for a 50-foot parcel. Would that be put to the taxes, or do you have to pay that? Again, it can be. It wouldn't be. You get another notice in the mail with the amount uh -huh. that we hope will be around that amount, mm -hmm. and we'll have another public hearing if that's approved by the city council. Uh -huh. As I mentioned, that goes up to the county tax rolls. You've got 30 days to pay it up there in full or it can go on the taxes for yeah. over 10 years. Because in our alley, I got mine, at, I put in like a brick driveway, and out of the new paper they put in cement, but right up to the tower. Is that where they're gonna redo the, up where the tower is now, or what? what? What was your address again? Well, more than like a, people what was, put what in was your address? driveways. What you was know, your address? So 617 I South Broadway. I got like a single garage and a carport down there, and I put it like, it's not that far, so I put in like a brick brick driveway, you know? Mm -hmm. But a lot of them, they built new garage and they put in concrete, but they put right up to the tower where it is now. Is that where they're, they're gonna put the existing tower in then? Where it is at, at, at the location? Yeah, I'm, I gotta look at the sections here. Let's oh. see what that's what we're about. Because our alley is pretty bad shape, but see, I bought that house in 85, I think in 87 they redid Broadway, and then the state said we always had parking on Broadway before. But when the state did it, they said, well, we'll go with no parking, but we'll do your alley, we'll plow your alleys in the wintertime. I haven't seen one plowed yet. <laughs> 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 well, we're, show we're showing matching into the driveways pretty well. Again, 
when we get a stake, we can meet with you out uh -huh. there and kind of show you exactly what's going to happen. Okay, but well, because I have not, because I park my van, a lot of people park. Now, when they do the alley, if we park on the side streets or what? Yeah, you can park in the side streets, um, and typically they'll leave one end of the alley open at all times. When they get in there and dig deep, then it's okay. kind of a day you maybe should park on the side street. Okay. But they get it graveled usually by the end of the day or the next day, and then you can drive back in there again. Because we got a, we got like a storm, a storm sewer, a rate in the. Yes. Is that the storm sewer in there or what? Yes. We got like, and do we do that or they just. We'll, we'll leave that storm sewer in there. We'll just match into it again, okay. make it drain properly. Okay. Because so, I, my people ask me, I'd like to know what it would cost them, so now I can tell them. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, okay. usually about $44 per foot. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Number 10, Alley Block 105, south of Center Street. Brett Valentin, got a few questions for you. So that forty-four foot, uh, that forty-four dollar foot um, uh, quote applies to any kind of project. Is that correct? We're at uh, Nineteen okay. South State. We've got this lovely. Yeah. You, know, you you've got what we refer to as a T alley. So you would have, I believe, one hundred sixty-five feet on one side, and in that, correct, you've got yeah, a long I'm side. Well, yeah all the way to that other right. alley yes. yeah in this case we've kind of adopted a, a modified assessment policy and that these t alleys will only uh especially assess a maximum of 100 feet so okay. you're talking about 4400 dollars for fair. that whole side there now you know i read here it says east west west now obviously there is midwest bank and uh, yep. midwest bank and then there's of course still some gravel there you are you going to do anything with that? We're, we're not out? doing anything with the gravel section. Okay. It's it's uh, just typically a reconstruction of the existing sure. blacktop there. If they wanted to petition for improvements, initial improvements, we could do it at a d later date. But sure. we're just going to do that that existing Great. blacktop section. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And then, if I understood well, we're not to expect those projects to take place <coughs> until next year. Is that correct? That if everything goes according to plan, it'd be this summer. Oh, this summer. But the special assessments wouldn't happen until next year. Oh, okay, got it. So we're, we're, we're not going to have to pay until next year. Um, the other thing I was thinking is, oh, yeah, the dip. Are you guys doing anything about that? Or we're well, just, you know, if you are. I'm going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> that <too. laughs> we, um, <coughs> there's a lot of people who probably had, you know, undercarriage. Un under under <laughs> under car damage there it's very steep and um i don't know if you can visualize it we're talking just about the approach up to state street the yeah the approach yeah. from state yeah. street as you go up and then down if you have a car you yeah. will we hit you will bottom <laughs> yeah. well and the garbage truck of course yeah, yeah we, we show sa shaving a little of that off i mean we got there's eight eight almost nine percent grade in there we can't do a whole lot with it but we can we can make it better and then you said two to three weeks usually, right? Yeah, weather dependent. You know, on a hill like that, if you get a big rain and all washes downhill, you lost two or three days. And sure. But typically, that's what it takes. Sure. Anything else? Seems like we're good. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else on that one? Yeah. Next, number 11, Alec Block 109 south of Center Street. And number 12, sidewalk improvements on, that's 20th South and Bridge Street. Anybody have anything? Step up to the mic, please. Hi, my name is Christine Boggins. I live at 621 Fender. I'm sorry I missed uh, oh. my time. Mm -hmm. so okay, that's all right. We're uh, in the newer subdivision up there, and it's gravel right now. In fact, we just moved in last year. I know there have, are people that have lived there for uh, more years than we've been, obviously, eight or more. Um, but we are on the end that um, butts up against Haberly. Is that how you say it? Uh, but anyway, it's um, on a corner there in Block 2. And 
we have had a lot of trouble with mud this um, season or when it rains heavily. And so I just am putting in a plug, um, even if I, d I know you have multiple things on the agenda here to do, if nothing else, if we could have it paved, it would be great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the alley, we couldn't park in our uh, garage for two weeks. I was afraid um, coming out a couple weeks ago, I thought I was gonna get stuck. Mm -hmm. um, and then just all the, it was tearing up our own driveway mm -hmm. and the mud that was getting put in our garage was mm -hmm. substantial. So um, the road itself isn't bad. It's more the alley and this Haberly, um, which is between our house and Mr. Cochran's. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really bad. It's, uh, and then when the gar garbage trucks go through, it's kind of a, an issue too. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that was the biggest thing, just we're really pushing for that <laughs> pavement. <laughs> and um, just wondering if you do pave, are you paving, were you planning that alleys are in the works then to do too? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Mr. President, I, all the roadways, Haverly, if that's how you pronounce it, I believe, okay. uh, Fander Drive, the alleys will all be paved, curb and gutter, sidewalks. So hopefully the mud will not be a problem after this summer. Okay. And how long would you expect that big project? Uh, take? They take a little longer. We've got some minor uh, utility extensions uh, we need to deal with and some regrading and things. So you know, it'll be a couple months. It, it's, okay. it's not <laughs> terrible. But, you know, once they get and going, they got nice. yes. and daughter yeah, comes. We'll, and then we'll deal with it. Um, you know, as we'll far as parking. Um, well, for yeah. the most part, you can park in, in, in the roadways that are being worked on, except okay. during certain times. And the contractor... Typically, we'll put flyers in the mail if you want to get on. Know. My assistant does okay. texting and emails, so we'll get you on a list and okay. help you out. So, mm -hmm. okay. however Sounds you'd like good. to be notified, we can <laughs> help with that. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Anybody else like to be heard? <coughs> See <you> none. Entertain <coughs> I'll offer Offered. a motion to. Uh, for the resolution, we have the hearing close the public hearing and order in the 2016 utility um, street and alley improvements, group one project. Second. We got a motion and a second off resolution, waived reading. Any more discussion? Let's get her done. Yep. Mm -hmm. Assistant Finance Director, please call the roll. Council Fisher? Yes. Council Mack? Yes. Council Schultz? Yes. Council Webster? Yes. Um, President Schmidt? Yes, motion carries. Item 2B, conduct a public hearing to consider a resolution approving the condition of the final plat to Valley Heights 6th edition located at 1520 Westridge Road. Just like to add from the Planning Commission, uh, we recommended approval. Um, we went over it and it was last month's meeting and mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple conditions that uh, they're working <coughs> on the details, you know, with the utilities and that were not nor normal, but, you know, th they're aware of it and how they're going to handle it. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Public hearing, so. Yep. Anybody else like to, anybody out in the audience like to be heard? Nope. Seeing none, entertain a motion, close public hearing. I'll offer a motion to close the public hearing and recommend uh, offer a resolution, weigh the reading, approve the conditions with the final plot for Valley Hills 6th edition located at 1520 Westridge Road. Second. We got a motion and a second close public hearing, offer the resolution, weigh the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Assistant Finance Director, please call the roll. Council Fisher? Yes. Council Mack? Yes. Council Schultz? Yes. Council Webster? Yes. President Schmidt? Yes, motion carries. Item 3A, consider a resolution requesting funding from the 2016 <coughs> Minnesota bond bill for the German Park Outdoor Performance Art Center Amphitheater. Yes, Mr. President, the uh, Park and Rec uh, Commission uh, heard uh, this issue yesterday and uh, unanimously voted to uh, recommend that uh, the City Council approve this request and uh, just remind the Council that we've gotten 
uh, quite a number of uh, generous uh, donations uh, for this project. And I think that the, uh, that's a real indication that the people who are making these generous donations would like to see this project move forward. Um, and so uh, if we can apply for and get this grant, I think we can or get, the, get this as part of the bonding bill. Uh, the hope is we can get this, get this done. Do we have a timetable on this grant when, when it, the results would, you know, or what are our chances? Here we go. Park and Recreation Director Tom Schmitz, uh, President Schmitz, counselors, um, this would be a request in this year's legislative bonding bill, which uh, you know is going to be taking place in throughout April, and uh, it's a bonding session. They expect it to be relatively short. I know they're very busy up there. There's a lot of uh, high-level uh, uh, topics and funding requests, um, so uh, we don't know. You know we may fi we'll find out sooner than. Uh, a normal session would be my estimate. Mm -hmm. So if we don't get it this year, we'll just apply for it again next year. Is that the plan? Well, two years. Or I mean, two years. Bonding, I'm responding. Yeah. Yeah. That's a possibility, yes. Or we would just potentially move forward. I strongly support this. I looked at the plans. Um, we have you know, so many of our older folks that enjoy these concert um, parks, and it's just not very safe for them right now. It, I mean, what the plans, I just really like the... The, the wheelchair access for folks that want to come in wheelchairs, that upper level access, mm -hmm. um, the families that can come in and sit on these benches. I don't know if, if everybody's had a chance to look at the mm -hmm. designs, but I, I really like this design for this park. So I'm going to go ahead and offer the resolution and waive the reading for this. I'll second it. We got a motion to second to offer the resolution, waive the reading. This is for uh, $300,000. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to let us know? or? No, unless there's any questions that the council has. Yeah. Anybody and have anything? Uh, well, the other, I think um, you might make it clear how much money we have and how much, uh, how much the total project is uh, expected to be so that people understand. Certainly, yeah. As the action form uh, denotes here, we've got a little over $300,000 in cash and pledges, mm -hmm. and uh, we're uh, asking for a similar match. Um, the project is anticipated to cro cost near six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think we should mention that, you know, according to our data here, we have thirty-five thousand in cash coming from two private donors, one hundred and one thousand from two private pledges, one hundred and thirty-five thousand from our park and rec budget, mm -hmm. and thirty to forty thirty to forty thousand product pledge from American Arts Stone. That mm -hmm. just says a lot that our community really wants this mm -hmm. project to be done and to use so much. I used to live down there. Um, 20 years ago, and, and it was used a lot. I mean, it's I was down there a lot, but there's a lot of families, but a lot mm -hmm. of older folks, I think, would enjoy and use this park a lot more if it's set up uh, to be handicapped mm -hmm. accessible. So <coughs> hopefully we can get it. Yep. Go ahead, Nick. As a, as a performer, and I see another performer sitting out in the audience, uh, if we could get the people to move closer to us, accessibly to, we can move closer to us because Sometimes you're <laughs> looking way up there on top of the hill to see the people that are listening yeah. to you. And, and they're up there that close because they, no, they can't get down. They can't get down. Can't get down. Can't That's get correct. Down. And yeah. so it really will be nice if they will be able to mm -hmm. have the opportunity and the accessibility to move down closer to us. Yeah, probably the only thing I looked when I looked at the uh, – is to make sure that we have the shade trees up in that area where the mm -hmm. wheelchairs are going to be or have some type of shading mm -hmm. capability up there. That's the only thing I looked at that I saw because it's similar to that park that we have over in Mankato, um, which doesn't has little to no shade, and, and boy, that, that can get pretty hot over there in a very short amount of time. So that was my only – there is some trees back there, but I don't know if they're really shade trees, but that was the only thing I, th I saw that I'm like, well, I'm going to make sure those are some good shade trees back there. But great project. Good. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, nothing. Just the finance director, please call the roll. Council Fisher? Yes. Council Nash? Yes. Council Schultz? Yes. Council Yes. President Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Item 4A Consider motion to approve the professional service agreement with Brown Intertech to provide material testing services for the 2015 MASA project. Uh, improvement project. So moved. Second. We got a motion in the second. That's for $3,908. Any more discussion? Just out of curiosity, is it 2015 or 2016? 
Oh, oops. Uh, it's 2015, actually, Mr. President. That we bid this in 2015, and I may recall the bids. Oh. We got one bid, and it was quite a oh, bit over the engineer's right, estimate. Right, we right. rebid it, and we have a 2016, so I just left it all right. mm -hmm. because it, the plans were all signed and everything. So it is correct. <clears throat> Thank you. Do we have a motion and a second? Motion. Yep. Yes. Okay. Any more discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 4B, consider motion to award a bid to the exterior lighting project at the New Orleans Public Library. That's an amount of uh, $41,745. I'd like to hear about this project. Chris Wiley, Library Director. And if New Cat could pull up the screen for me. Um, what you're going to see first is the current lighting situation. I was uh, here before you in August when we discussed what we have. Uh, 17 poles with globe fixtures. You see 15 circles here because between the main library and the Minnesota Music Hall of Fame, one circle encompasses three lights. Uh -huh. They're in various states of repair. Mm -hmm. Several of them no longer work. There's some corrosion, difficult to clean. The poles have been dented over time. And so at that point, the library board and the city council approved uh, the engineering um, design mm -hmm. um, project. They've come back to us mm -hmm. with uh, an interesting scheme. We're going from 17 poles and globe fixtures to 10 poles mm -hmm. and 11 fixtures. First, you'll see two circles. They each encompass two antique lights. Right in front of Broadway, that's two lights that will flank that wooden door. Mm -hmm. And then on First North Street, that's the original entrance to the library and that too is antique. And they will look very similar to what you see here except for that little peak at the top, um, that won't be there. And it'll be a very simple circular base. <laughs> These are 10 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Then around the rest of the building, <coughs> there will be six poles. Um, in the bottom right hand corner, that's two lights on one pole. Mm -hmm. And these will be sh what they call shoebox mm -hmm. design with a square pole. That's a standard parking lot light. Mm -hmm. We hope that with the, the architecture of the building that these just kind of blend in, mm -hmm. being very uh, horizontal. Mm -hmm. uh, the bid, uh, the lowest bid that we received was from full service for $41,745. We re did receive two other bids um, and then this would come out of fund balance, which currently stands at about $400,000 for the library. Mm -hmm. The top two bids were quite close. Huh? They were They're very close. Wow, 30 some dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I guess do we have a reason why one bid was $20,000 more? I mean, I mean, if they had an engineering spec and... I don't know. Okay. Somebody slipped on the pen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's nice in a way of, you know, local businesses mm -hmm. looking at doing it, and uh, mm -hmm. they're pretty competitive. So. Mm -hmm. The only question I had was with this type of lighting, is this a similar type of lighting we would use in the future for other parking lot replacement lights? I mean, it, do we want a similar style in the city? Not that it's a big deal, but I was just kind of curious. If this is the new wave of lighting, is this what we're going to see in our city parking lots in the future too? The style? I would have to say they're, they're probably not synchronize to anything else we would do in other parts of like right. the public parking lots the, the lighting around the library is is pretty one locational okay you know so uh, most of our municipal parking lots are uniform but most of these light fixtures are between two buildings mm -hmm. yeah. they're just probably unique. unique just to the site well i suppose it has to stay pretty lit up because there's a lot of kids and mm -hmm. stuff around but these are all led lights so that's so. correct yeah i think what you're also seeing here is you know when <coughs> you saw the the shoebox lighting the flat uh, yeah. surface you know it's kind of different for, for years they've been going towards the 
no light shining up oh. into the sky mm -hmm. to try yep. and minimize the uh, uh, light pollution. And you know these are the, nice. the standard. Mm -hmm. right. uh, now we're going to LEDs so that the obviously the you know maybe you know, I won't say one tenth. You know, a normal residential light, as they say, you know, it uses one tenth of the power a regular yeah. light yep. bulb would use, but you know, these this will not only reduce the energy consumption from the library's perspective, but uh, give a nice, nice clean light. Mm -hmm. And it could be something that once we see these, it might be something we look at when we retrofit other yeah. other parking yep. lots. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking it might be a test test site, but I'll mo I'll offer the motion and approve this. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 4C, consider resolution authorizing the Green Corp grant application to fund the Minnesota Green Corp position to work on urban forestry projects. Again, this uh, came before the Park and uh, Rec uh, Commission yesterday, uh, and the uh, commission voted uh, unanimously to uh, recommend that we uh, move forward on this. And so did the Tree Advisory Commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess I would be interested in hearing more about mm -hmm. that. Tom? Certainly, <coughs> President Schmitz, uh, counselors, this is really a, a joint uh, request for application between the Tree Advisory Commission, the Park and Recreation Commission, and um, you know, actually a multiple number of departments that are advisors to the Tree Advisory Commission, the Engineering Department, Public Works Department, Public Utilities, and uh, of course park and rec and what we're requesting here is to apply for a position this is an 11 month position uh, funded through the state uh, pollution control agency for a green core uh, participant to come into the community September uh, for the following 11 months there's a number of different emphasis areas as you see in the action sheet urban forestry energy mm -hmm. conservation local foods waste prevention recycling <coughs> and others and we are uh, focusing on the urban forestry um, track, so to speak. And uh, the reason for uh, asking for a participant is to help us move some of our initiatives forward. You know, we've got a variety of initiatives from disease prevention, um, planning programs, pruning programs, inventorying of our urban forest, and um, just a, a wide variety of needs we have. We've got tree work being done by a number of different departments. And uh, some collaboration has been taking place. There's an opportunity for, uh, I think, more emphasis and more focus and collaboration and an assistant uh, to help us with that will uh, move some of these initiatives forward, allow us to accomplish more work. Mm -hmm. Tom, have we done this before? In no, the past? Um, so we haven't. Uh, President Schmitz, counselors, there is a uh, Green Corps participant in the community now. The Hearts, Heart of New Ulm has uh, applied for and been granted a participant um, in this past cycle. Um, and that gentleman is working on complete streets, uh, safe routes to school, and uh, some, some healthy uh, walk and, and bike initiatives for the community. Very successful. Uh, Cindy Winters is the supervisor of that participant. They're very happy with that. Uh, I know the school district is very excited about the work that's been completed mm -hmm. with that. You can apply for one or two participants. Um, we're suggesting just to try this one uh, with the city. I know the Heart of New Ulm and that group is going to be applying for an, you know, an extension or another participant mm -hmm. for uh, the, the 11 months uh, following the participant they have right now. So it's our first uh, application for the Green Corps from the city that I'm aware, aware of. And if we get this, they'll come in and, you know, present perhaps on a couple things, their findings, you know, mm -hmm. to the council down the line? Yes, you betcha. So, so the cost to the city uh, for this is? Yeah. Zero. Uh, the cost is very minimal. We'll be uh, providing office, a workspace, a workstation, and uh, a, a vehicle. Uh, Public Works is going to uh, generously offer a surplus uh, pickup truck available. And, and really, that's about it. Um, there's no, uh, the wages and benefits are paid for so by the there. Green Corps program, not the city. Okay. Thank you. And you're the, you are the direct supervisor? Um, I will be the uh, host site supervisor, 
and all of <coughs> the other advisors from the various departments will be assisting with different tasks and, uh, and projects. Uh, Mr. Schmitz, Mr. Yes. Judge Grant, uh, so the individual would not be an employee of the City of New Ulm? Correct. Um, would he be covered under someone else's workers' compensation? Yes, yes. That is also um, covered drive, through the Green Corps program. If he's driving a city vehicle, is he going to be insured for that? <coughs> My understanding is yes. Um, you have to ask the city attorney. Well, I think we need to ask the, we need to check the insurance policy, yeah. uh, the coverage that we would have for that, because that's kind of an unusual situation. Well, yeah, <coughs> typically when you see volunteers come in and they're going to help clean up a park or something like that, uh, you know, they're covered for the normal bumps and bruises and twisted ankles and scrapes and whatnot. <coughs> uh, but we, we can check on the vehicle aspect. I. Uh, we, we bring in a, a foreign uh, German national from Germany on the Sister City program, and we offer them a vehicle through the local dealership and turn them loose. Uh, this isn't even nearly as risky as that. But you'll check on it. But I will check on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we're fine in that area, too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions for Tom? County does no, I think it'll be great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. <coughs> uh, any more, no more questions? Finance or Assistant Finance Director, please call the roll. We have a resolution. We don't Do we have have? I'll offer oh. the resolution, waive the reading. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second to offer the resolution, waive the reading. Assistant Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Oh. <coughs> With no more business, mm -hmm. oh, let's just before I go there. Let's we got a special meeting for Thursday, March seventeenth at five p.m. Work, work session. session. Work, work session. session. Yep. Work session. Work session. How long is that going to be? Is the parade going to be over? Yeah. I'm just uh, joking. The parade <laughs> <laughs> it goes on for two hours. Doesn't it? All right. All right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Two hours. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Mm. Meeting adjourned. Meeting.